In the heart of China's Xinjiang region, in the vast expanse of the Lop Nur, lies a site of great historical significance in the annals of Chinese communist military history, the site of the first ever atomic bomb detonation. Today, this remote location continues to play a pivotal role in China's military testing and training due to its unique geographical positioning. Hidden amidst the sandy deserts, some 150 kilometers south of Lop Nur, is a remarkably lifelike full-sized model of a U.S. aircraft carrier. In early 2024, Planet Lab satellites captured a remarkable sight that has drawn considerable attention. It is a meticulous recreation of the USS Gerald R. Ford, a prominent target for military exercises. The level of detail in this replica is nothing short of astonishing, with clear contours of the carrier's island and intricate features such as four catapult tracks on the deck. Viewed from the high-altitude perspective of a satellite, one can discern the carefully crafted target, complete with mast and other details. This project's history traces back to half a year ago. Reports indicate that as early as July 28, 2023, Preparations for leveling the ground at this location had begun. It wasn't until November 11th that the finer details of this target became apparent. The specific coordinates of this site are at latitude 38 degrees 38 minutes 8.84 seconds north and longitude 87 degrees 43 minutes 36.42 seconds east. Feel free to check on Google Earth if you're interested. But why has the Chinese Communist Party undertaken the construction of such a lifelike model of a U.S. aircraft carrier in this remote desert? Insider sources suggest that the reasons behind this are rather complex. Opting for remote desert testing instead of the South China Sea serves a dual purpose. One is to prevent the advanced reconnaissance capabilities of the U.S. military from gathering crucial data on Chinese missile tests. Two is to avoid the missile test debris sinking into deep waters, where it could be detected and analyzed by U.S. forces. Another key factor is the performance of Russia's Dagger hypersonic missiles on the Ukrainian battlefield since last May. These missiles have faced multiple interceptions by the U.S. Patriot III missiles, and therefore, their combat effectiveness was questioned. Some experts in the defense industry pointed out astonishing similarities in technical parameters between the Dagger missile and China's DF-17 hypersonic missile. Rumors suggested that certain critical components of the Dagger missile may have originated from China. This technological resemblance, coupled with the challenging situation the Dagger missile has encountered in Ukraine, appears to have sent a clear signal to the Chinese People's Liberation Army. That is, relying solely on ballistic missiles may not be sufficient to gain an advantage in modern warfare. Consequently, the CCP military has shifted its focus towards the development of more advanced air-launched anti-ship cruise missiles, aiming to find new avenues to overcome the formidable defenses of the U.S. Aegis system. According to industry insiders, the intricately detailed aircraft carrier model constructed in the Lop Nur Desert is intended for testing satellite image processing algorithms and optical target recognition technologies. The primary goal of advancing and refining these technologies is to enhance the guidance precision of cruise missiles in their final stages. The application of television or imaging infrared guidance systems allows cruise missiles to achieve more accurate identification and tracking of targets as they approach. This is a crucial factor in improving the tactical performance of cruise missiles in complex battlefield environments. The military simulation activities of the Chinese Army go far beyond just replicating U.S. aircraft carriers and warships. They have created a multifaceted military simulation world in the desert, encompassing various military facilities from naval bases to air bases. One of these simulations is an accurate replica of Japan's Yokosuka naval base. In this model, impact craters near the center of three ship targets are designed to inflict damage on all three vessels with a single strike. But achieving such an outcome would require a surprise attack tactic. In an actual wartime scenario, U.S. warships would likely have deployed and taken measures to evade such pre-planned attacks. This image from 2013 shows CCP conducting tests on its ability to use ballistic missiles to target ships in a harbor. The scope of China's military simulations extends far beyond what has been mentioned so far. They have gone to great lengths to meticulously replicate various critical military and infrastructure elements, including airport runways, ammunition depots, aprons, vehicles, fuel depots, and power stations.
What's even more striking is that China has gone as far as replicating the Patriot missile batteries at Kadena Air Base, the F-22 fighter jet apron, and the fuel depot at Misawa Air Base in Japan. Despite China's extensive military simulations and exercises, it may still lag behind the rapid advancements in the United States and Western countries. The successful interception of an Iranian-made cruise missile by Israel's F-35I fighter jet on October 31st highlights the advanced capabilities of the U.S. in multi-layered information monitoring and rapid data analysis. This suggests that the U.S.'s AI computing and data sharing systems can effectively counter a variety of threats, including improved Chinese cruise missiles. Therefore, no matter how much China enhances the precision of its weapon systems, it may still face challenges in evading the high-level defense networks and precision strike capabilities of the U.S. Therefore, the U.S. military is undergoing a revolutionary transformation in the Indo-Pacific region. They are reconfiguring all their data chains, upgrading their C4ISR systems, and utilizing powerful computing capabilities to effectively command Patriot 3, or Standard 6 missiles, building an impregnable defense network to counter the threat posed by China's DF-17 missiles. Additionally, the U.S. plans to deploy 240 F-35 fighter jets, each equipped with at least six to eight AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles, along the line from Okinawa, Japan, to Taiwan. These aircraft form an airtight defense network. Even in the face of a concentrated launch of 1,000 Chinese cruise missiles, these F-35s can effectively intercept them. While the Chinese military may appear formidable in terms of hardware, its actual combat capabilities remain uncertain. Looking back at the August 2020 South China Sea test launches, Half of the two DF-21D and two DF-26B missiles launched by China did not hit their intended targets. These test results exposed deficiencies in the precision of these DF missiles and prompted China to seek more accurate target simulations. At the coordinates just mentioned, at the center of the rectangular area in the image, a rudimentary full-sized replica of a U.S. aircraft carrier was discovered in November 2021. The rectangular area to the southeast, which previously served as a target for destroyers, has now been transformed into a lifelike aircraft carrier model. At that time, there was also a track indicated by the red dashed line. An Arleigh Burke class destroyer model was positioned on it. This suggests that the Chinese military was attempting to simulate the movement of U.S. naval vessels in the area. Going back to the events in 2013, the Chinese military conducted a series of tests in this area. They targeted everything from port docks to airports, using various simulated targets for attack. This testing continued until the middle of 2019. While the CCP has been secretly constructing aircraft carrier and destroyer models in its desert, the U.S. military has been aware of these. In January 2021, General Jeffrey Trussler, the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare and the Director of Naval Intelligence, explicitly stated during a security meeting that they hoped China would continue to invest in anti-ship ballistic missiles. This statement seems to reveal a deep understanding and confidence within the U.S. military in dealing with this threat. In recent years, the U.S. has not been intimidated by the threat posed by the Dongfeng missile series. Instead, it has increasingly showcased its military presence in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. The actions of the U.S. go beyond just military aircraft landing in Taiwan. They even include the deployment of special forces with long-term assignments. Analysis by U.S. media suggests that the U.S. military's confidence may be rooted in its ability to counter the threat posed by these Dongfeng missiles. In this scenario, China's continued heavy investment in the Dongfeng missile program could be seen as a waste of resources. Faced with China's efforts in military technology, the U.S. military appears to be well prepared. In fact, with each Dongfeng missile launch, the trajectory parameters are closely monitored and understood by U.S. space-based infrared satellites and tracking radars, including South Korea's THAAD system. China's fixation on U.S. aircraft carriers is deeply ingrained. This can be traced back to the 1995-1996 Taiwan Strait Crisis when Beijing attempted to use its military power to influence the 1996 Taiwan presidential election. But faced with the deployment of two aircraft carrier battlegroups by the U.S., China's efforts did not achieve the desired results. Since then, 
China has consistently sought to push U.S. aircraft carriers out of the Western Pacific region to demonstrate its military influence in the area. The development of anti-ship missiles like the DF-17, DF-21D, and DF-26B by CCP's rocket force was indeed aimed at showcasing their anti-access area denial capabilities. But for PLARF to effectively threaten U.S. aircraft carriers with these missiles, they must first locate the precise positions of the carriers. As we know, finding aircraft carriers is no easy task. While satellite reconnaissance has its uses, it cannot provide real-time monitoring and is susceptible to weather and trajectory influences. To address this challenge, China has deployed radar on artificial islands, launched electronic intelligence satellites into space, and deployed unmanned submarines and maritime patrol aircraft in an attempt to locate U.S. aircraft carriers. But, the U.S. military has equally efficient countermeasures, using electronic warfare and kinetic attack methods to disrupt or destroy these surveillance platforms and their communication data links. The U.S. can also degrade spy satellites through kinetic and non-kinetic means. Continuous patrols by U.S. Navy vessels are intended to detect and destroy unmanned submarines and underwater spying networks. The U.S. Navy's stealth technology, electronic warfare capabilities, and anti-submarine warfare capabilities also serve as effective deterrence against CCP's efforts. Currently, the U.S. Navy and its sister branches have deployed a wide range of reconnaissance assets in the Western Pacific region, extending from near-Earth orbit to the seabed, creating a comprehensive surveillance network. This network not only conducts monitoring during peacetime, but also allows for rapid reinforcement in the event of a conflict. While CCP's military actions may seem formidable on the surface, they have yet to find effective means to counter the U.S. Navy in strategic competition. Even if the CCP can detect the location of an aircraft carrier, tracking and attacking it remains a daunting challenge. Aircraft carrier groups are highly mobile, capable of reaching speeds of up to 35 knots. This means that even if temporarily detected, they can quickly move within a vast area of 700 square miles in just 30 minutes. After 90 minutes, this area expands to over 6,000 square miles. In such dynamic scenarios, even the most advanced anti-ship weapons struggle to lock onto their precise positions. Not to mention the formidable defenses of aircraft carrier groups that are composed of Aegis-equipped warships. Aegis destroyers and cruisers can launch various standard missiles, such as the SM-3, SM-2, and SM-6. These missiles can intercept enemy warheads within the Earth's atmosphere, with the SM-3 even capable of targeting objects in space above the atmosphere. Even if an aircraft carrier's position is identified, breaking through its multi-layered defense network remains an immensely challenging task. Aircraft carrier strike groups not only benefit from the air defense protection of Aegis-equipped destroyers, but also have underwater support from Virginia-class attack submarines and aerial reconnaissance and interception capabilities. These military assets, integrated through the U.S. military's expanded joint engagement network, developed in recent years, facilitate seamless information sharing and coordinated operations among different branches. Every potential threat is rapidly identified and assigned to the most suitable sensors and weapon systems for interception, whether they are located in the maritime or aerial domains. Even before a land-based anti-ship missile is launched, the U.S. military's detection systems may have already captured this action. This information is transmitted in real time to any U.S. operational platform, whether it's the Navy, Air Force, or Army, enabling timely interception of the target. In such situations, it doesn't necessarily have to be the aircraft carrier battle group itself conducting the interception. Systems like the THAAD or Patriot missiles may have already addressed the threat. In the face of such a comprehensive and multi-layered defense network, the CCP's military threats seem to fall short. Every Dongfeng missile launch leaves traces within the U.S. military's space-based infrared satellite and radar networks, making it challenging for any threat to go unnoticed. Under the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air System within this network, which focuses on naval air defense and anti-air missions, the U.S. military's operational efficiency has greatly increased. While some have voiced concerns that China's new DF-17 and DF-27 missiles, equipped with maneuverable hypersonic glide warheads, could pose a greater challenge to U.S. defense, history and current capabilities 
have demonstrated that U.S. military technology often surpasses expectations. Just as the Russian Kinzhal hypersonic missile was shot down over Kiev in May 2023, and almost all aerial targets of Houthi forces in the Red Sea were intercepted, it is not surprising that the SM-6 missile can effectively deal with at least some types of hypersonic weapons in their terminal phases. The introduction of the SPY-6 radar provides a broader and higher resolution target detection and tracking capability, with tracking and guidance occurring simultaneously. This allows the U.S. military to be precise in countering various threats. In the field of electronic warfare, the U.S. Navy's Goddess of Vengeance electronic warfare system and the Surface Electronic Warfare Improvement Program, Block 3, have formed formidable technological barriers on the battlefield. They not only effectively detect, analyze, and counter enemy electronic attacks, but also use jamming and deception techniques to make enemy missiles lose their targets. During then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, the escort plan of the CCP military aircraft was disrupted by the electronic warfare technology of the U.S. Aircraft Carrier Group, demonstrating the overwhelming advantage of the U.S. military in this field. C-WIP Block 3 can also jam and deceive the radars and communication systems on anti-ship missiles, emit false target signals, mislead enemy missiles, causing them to attack the wrong target or path. Jamming the communication links in the navigation and control process of anti-ship missiles, along with advanced sensors and signal processing, allows for the rapid identification and analysis of incoming anti-ship missiles, providing decision support for electronic warfare and other defensive measures. Hitting an aircraft carrier with the most effective electronic warfare and fleet defense system ever designed by humans is likely something even the U.S. military wouldn't be able to do, let alone the Chinese military. If the threat comes from submarines underwater, the aircraft carrier can rely on the far superior Virginia-class submarines, destroyers, and anti-submarine sensors on both the aircraft carrier and its helicopters for assistance. Therefore, even if an adversary can locate an aircraft carrier in the vast Pacific Ocean, the likelihood of their weapons reaching the carrier and causing significant damage is small. The actual possibility of an aircraft carrier being sunk is very low. Even if the CCP military were to use air-launched YJ-18 missiles, or platforms like their H-6K bombers, or Su-30 MKK aircraft, they would likely be intercepted by U.S. aircraft or air defense systems. The firepower of the CCP military would need to break through the layered protection of an aircraft carrier battle group, which has become nearly impossible. Even if they could penetrate it, they would still face the carrier's formidable defense system, including the Vulcan cannons capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute. The experience and training of the U.S. Navy allow them to swiftly respond to carrier damage, making it challenging to render the carrier combat ineffective even when under attack. This capability is well understood by global military leaders like Xi Jinping. They recognize that even with the advancement of missile technology, destroying a U.S. aircraft carrier remains a formidable task. This understanding is also why Xi Jinping has been accelerating the development of China's own aircraft carriers. Aircraft carriers continue to symbolize a significant aspect of military power in today's world. Despite being at a technological disadvantage, the CCP does not give up its efforts in psychological and information warfare. For example, last May, PLA-supported researchers from North University of China claimed, in a published paper, that using 24 hypersonic anti-ship missiles could definitely sink the USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier. But Taiwan's National Defense Institute replicated this scenario using different parameters and reached a drastically different conclusion. Their simulations suggested that on average, only 2.2 carrier battle groups out of the U.S. Navy's six vessels would be sunk, constituting minimal damage. Whereas the CCP side has 5.6 vessels being sunk, almost the entire carrier strike group. Taiwan's research has found that only when American ships stop moving, their anti-aircraft missile systems are believed to have a relatively low hit rate, along with the depletion of attack capabilities from other weapons such as electronic interference and decoy systems, would the PLA's missiles be able to sink most of the U.S. fleet? These are extreme parameters, making the credibility of the results in the Chinese research paper questionable. Therefore, even in a war scenario near China's doorstep, the U.S. has plenty of reasons to doubt the CCP's ability to defeat a U.S. aircraft carrier. In fact, no country would willingly confront the severe consequences of sinking a U.S. aircraft carrier. 